Okay, this is an introduction to uh, GeoGebra. I'm going to show you some of the basic features of how to use it, um, and then we're going to look at creating some uh, sequences and some functions that uh, match those sequences and graph them. Um, first thing, a little bit about how to use some of its functions. Um, We've got this move arrow. Now that moves different objects. We don't have any objects on here yet, but um, you can see I can select different things using it, but we don't have really anything on there. If I want to create a point, I could create that point and then I could go back and I could move it around. Um, now it's pretty hard to get it exactly at, like, for example, one, two, like there. Um, actually, it's not because right now there's a setting on it that's automatic. If you ch uh, chose off this um, the uh, magnet, then it would be really difficult to get it right on one, two. You can try this. Um, there you go, that works, that works okay. But um, it's much easier if you do automatic or uh, snap to grid. Now you may be saying, what's the grid? Well, I can add the grid here. And you can see that um, it makes it really easy if you try this to snap it right on the coordinates here. Um, now, if I go to this move graphics view, notice that if you roll over the tools, then you can get a description of what they are and how they're used. Um, and then I can, I can move this uh, the coordinate plane around. Um, I can also adjust the uh, axes if I roll over it. So here we go. And that actually changes the grid. So then if I were to go back and move this point around, the snap to grid, it'd be really hard to get it at uh, 3, 5. But I could get it at 3, 10 pretty easily because it just magnetizes right there. If I want to delete a point, I can... Um, click on it with the arrow and then I can hit backspace or I can do control, I mean right click um, and do delete. And you can see there's a lot of different things you can do here. You can, um, if you look at these menus, there's lots of things you can play around with. Um, for the time being though, um, I'm going to adjust the grid back up to, let's say, th uh, the maximum 30 on this axis. Now, if I want to label my axes, which is really important, I can um, do graphics um, and go to the x-axis, and I can go to label, and I can type anything I want in, um, or I could just choose x, and then, um, but in this case, I'm going to call it maybe n, um, and then. Um, uh, U sub n would be my vertical axis if we're looking think about sequences. I can't really get this to be uh, U sub n. In the, um, there's nothing in this drop-down menu, but that'll do for now. Um, and you can see that they appear here. Now, if I wanted to like copy and paste this uh, graph area into something, it's what I can do is I can go to um, Edit and go Graphics View to Clipboard. Um, and I can do that, and um, I can go to Microsoft Word, for example, and then I can paste it right in there, so, which is really useful if you're doing a project, um, which all of you will have to do for your math classes and internal assessment. Um, so you can use you can use the GeoGebra to help you with that. Now. Uh, I can also go to view and I can create a spreadsheet and you can see we get something that looks very much like Excel um, and we're going to play around with this spreadsheet a little bit. You can adjust it. This algebra view shows you different things. We'll, we'll play around with that more later. Um, now let's say I'm going to create a sequence. Uh, maybe here's my n column and my u n column. Um, and just like in Excel, well I guess I'll start with one and um, well that seemed to get the first five of them for me. I don't know why it did that, but if I go equals and then the previous cell plus one and hit enter, and then what I can do is I can I can drag that corner down and, I, and I'm going up by one. 
Uh, now, if I want to make a formula using the uh, sequence for, let's say, arithmetic sequence formula, I can start by going, actually, I need, I need my first term of the sequence. Um, so let's just say that's 3 in this example. Let's say that's 3. And then um, I'm going to create a formula for it. Now, I, I can refer to that first term of the sequence, which in this case is in cell B2. Um, so I can click there. Now, an important thing is for me to, um, I'm going to put this dollar sign after it. And what that does is that keeps, it's, it, it keeps um, this part of the formula constant. And it's the same thing in Microsoft Excel. Is If you have the dollar sign, then it keeps um, one of the cells constant. Because if I drag this down later, then the variables will change with what cell and its relationship with other cells. But I want the u sub 1, or the first term of the sequence, to be uh, whatever's in B2 every time. So I'm going to add, and then let's say, um, so I, I'm going to do the n um, minus 1, just like in the arithmetic uh, sequence. Um, and if I go times, let's say our common difference is 2. Um, and then so you can see that goes up there. And if I drag this down, um, you can see this goes up by 2 uh, every time. So it's a nice arithmetic sequence. Now what if I want to look at, uh, I mean, take a look at what that looks like on the graph. Um, what I can do is this, is I can go equals um, and then brackets. And I can put this, comma, and then the, the adjacent cell and hit enter. And you see that a point popped up. And so if I put it in, go equals and put it in brackets, then um, it's going to appear as a point with those coordinates. Um, and if I drag this down, it will copy that. So there we go. Here's, some, here's a graphical representation of the terms of this arithmetic sequence. Now, let's contrast that maybe to a geometric sequence. Um, again, I'm going to go n and um, u, u sub n. And the first term, I mean, the, I'm going to start with 1. And again, I'll go equals this guy uh, plus 1. And I'm going to drag this down. Maybe do the first few terms of this. Okay. Um, and then, um, I don't know, let's create a, a geometric sequence. Uh, let's say the first term is 30. Um, and then let's um, express the relationship as uh, whatever is in this cell. Uh, and I'm going to make that constant. Um, and then since it's geometric, I'm going to multiply it. And let's say the common ratio is uh, 0 0.9. So um, it's, it's, uh, you can think of it as exponential decay if you want, um, or the geometric sequence is going to be decreasing because it's being multiplied by a number between 0 and 1. Um, and then to the power of, and then we can refer to this cell, minus 1, so that's a geometric uh, sequence formula. And that didn't work, uh, I think because there was a space in, um, that, need, that, that happened. So, I've got this equal sign here, and then if I take away that space between the B16 and there, and that works. Okay, and well, that's 0.9 of 30 is 27, so it looks like we did something right. And let's drag that down, see what happens. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing, is I'm going to plot these as points. So equals this, comma, this. Oh, looks like my brackets got messed up there, so I'm going to go ahead and switch that. And hit enter, and then you can see that point appeared right up here, which is good. Um, and you can see this. Now, if I want a few more terms, I can um, just take these bottom guys here, and since I've, um, they're in formulae, they will keep going. Now, let's compare these two patterns. Um, if I go over here, I can see um, a little bit further, um, and actually. Instead, maybe what I want to do is I want to squeeze this down just a little bit. And you can see that the arithmetic sequence is a straight line. Um, arithmetic sequences are related to linear functions. And then um, here is my geometric sequence, and it looks like a nice 
curve, and like I said, this is related to exponential decay, so it's related to exponential functions. Um, okay, so let's say I want to like uh, uh, graph a function that's related to this. Well, then what I can do um, is I can go to this input bar here, and I can um, create a function f of x. Okay. Um, is equal to, um, and then we'll say, uh, let's see, let's go uh, 2x plus 1. And then you can see that that function matches quite well with my um, arithmetic sequence. Okay? Now, I can't put another f of x in there because something's already called f of x. So if I want to um, come up with a formula that matches the, um, the geometric sequence, I'll have to call it something else. So in this case, I'm going to call it g of x. Um, and then so the first term was uh, 30 and then times. Uh, that looks like a hat probably to you, but it's, uh, it's a star. Um, and then I'm going to go 0 0.9. Um, and then to the power of, I've got that here, hat, there's your hat, and then brackets um, x minus 1. Um, and then let's see how that fits, and that goes through those points nicely. Okay, and you know, one, one question that, this, that, you can, that you can answer with this is like, at what point does the, um, this geometric sequence uh, become less uh, than the arithmetic sequence. Well, if you think about it from a sequence's point of view, um, it, at n is 7, which is right here, the geometric sequence is still more than. Um, and then at n equals 8, then the geometric sequence is less than. And you can see that in the table if you look. At 8, it's four, uh, the geometric is 14.35. And eight at eight, it's uh, seventeen. So we can see that there. But if you think about it from in, in terms of a function, which is different because it's a it's a continuous uh, rather than a discrete. In other words, it's using um, all sorts of uh, decimal numbers for the places in between, which is why it's a straight line. Um, from a function point of view, you can use this this nifty feature here, uh, where I go to um, intersect down here. And um, if I do that, and then if I roll over, it tells me it says select two objects or click directly on intersections. So you can see that if I roll over here, I can click that one, and then I can click this one, and then it gives me that point of intersection. And that point of intersection came up right here. So that would be, for a continuous function, that would be the point of intersection. However, from, uh, like I said before, if you're looking at it from a sequence point of view, um, then it becomes uh, less the geometric becomes less than the arithmetic at 8. Um, okay, so that'll get you going, and then I, I have a, there's a, a little bit of a, a challenge for you to use GeoGebra to try and solve something. Um, so look for that, and uh, I'll, uh, uh, there will be more tutorials for, uh, for GeoGebra for you to um, learn how to use it, um, which will be really useful for your internal assessments and other investigative pieces in, in maths class. All right, good luck.